so in this video we starts with the systemic examination at first we start with the cardiovascular systemic examination okay there are four parts inspection palpation percussion and auscultation okay so let's start in the inspection part we have to write these in these points okay what are the points that is precordium and outside precordium in the inspection in the precordium you have to first see inspect the shape pulsation engorged through superficial vein polytheria scarma and in the outside the precordium the any other pulsation present or not okay so we starts first you have to expose the patient and we starts from the inspection in the inspection part we have to first see the cell of the precordium from the shape of the precordium the precordium is the anterior chest one which is covering the major heart and the brain cells from the shape of the precordium we can detect different anomalies like early onset and longer duration of heart disease what is the bulging of the precordium and another that is the patterning of the precordium can be of lung morphology any kind of fibrosis or any cause of pericardia so this part is the precordium area covering the uh, major portion of the heart and the major great vessels so there is no visible bulging or flattening of uh, precordium which is suggestive of no cardiac abnormalities from the next part which we can inspect is the uh, presence of any engorgement of superficial vein any present presence of any superficial vein is suggestive of the pathologies which are included the superior vena cava obstruction it may be inferior vena cava obstruction or any tumor which is or any malignancy which is uh, involving the pleura so from this we can detect the lung pathology as well as the cardiac pathology next we will inspect for polytheria that is presence of accessory nipple gap so here we can see only two nipples are present here which is not indicative of any presence of polytheria in congenital heart disease there is evidence of polythene so now so we have to inspect for any uh, presence of scar mark and the, the scar mark in different area signifies uh, different importance first we have to see the uh, midline of the scar mark in the in case of midline sternum we generally find the keloid scar so if any keloid scar is present along the midline sternum along the midline sternum it is indicative of any open heart surgery which is uh, more predominantly the cvg that is coronary artery bypass graft uh, which as a previous go we have to correlate with the previous history like any ischemic heart disease or uh, myocardial infarction then next we have to uh, go for the uh, inframammary area in the inframammary area in case of white cell valvulotomy valvulotomy the uh, in inframammary area there is a presence of scar mark then we have to uh, go for the in uh, infra clavicular uh, area in left infra clavicular area the scar mark for uh, base pecker insertion of the base pecker uh, scar mark is present uh, in the infra clavicular area apart from this if there is any uh, prick of needle uh, which is predominantly seen in uh, uh, in the in the left side in if there is indicative of pericardial synthesis and previous history of pericarditis has to be clinically assessed now next we have to see for the pulses the pulses then can be in the precordial or the pulsation can be outside the precordium which can be correlate clinically the apical pulsation that is we have to find the apex speed by palpatory finding but in uh, many pathological condition where there is a apical impulse which can be visible uh, at the at the level of uh, nipple which is uh, above or below or outside or that is laterally or medial to the nipple so in respect to the in respect to the nipple we have to see any visible impulse is there which is visible so we can uh, find out uh, first we have to find out the apex speed then we will uh, determine that it is either a hyperdynamic or hypodynamic so from this finding apart from this we have, we can see by we can visibly detect the presence of any apical impulse in the precordial area which is mainly in the mitral area so there is uh, and there is no visible uh, apical impulse which is suggestive of no uh, cardiac pathology involving the mitral area now after inspecting the apical area we have to see for other areas also so first from above to downward we will move from the 
we will first start from the carotid. So at the level of upper border of the uh, thyroid cartilage, we we can see the carotid. We can see the carotid artery pulses. So carotid pulsation can be seen in different conditions. It can be seen in the normal physiological condition like exertion, emotion, or excitement. Then in pathological condition like uh, in very common condition like the aortic regurgitation shows the polygram site that is pulsed by uh, carotid which can be uh, seen from the uh, inspectory finding. In case of hyper uh, dynamic circulatory state like severe anemia or thyroidopsychosis, uh, we can see this. And in case of aortic aneurysm, we can also find out the carotid pulses. Carotid pulses we have to come uh, below for the suprasternal uh, notch pulses. The suprasternal notch or it is also called as the jugular notch pulse. So it is also seen in the hyperkaryotic situation like uh, severe anemia, thyroid oxygenesis, or if any fever or pregnancy. Apart from that, in any aortic pathology, like aortic uh, regurgitation, in case of a coaptation of aorta, in case of aneurysm of aorta, or high arch aorta, we can see the suprasternal notch or the jugular notch pulses. Now we will see for the pulses and in the aortic, which is the right second intercostal space. The pulsation of the aortic area can be prominent in case of the validation of ascending aorta due to any aneurysm or if there is any uh, uh, prolonged or long standing aortic regurgitation, we can see the pulsation over the aortic area. Uh, next is the pulmonary area, which is the left second intercostal space. So, uh, in case of uh, in case of prolonged pulm pulmonary hypertension or if there is any uh, uh, atrial septal defect or VSD or in case of children the prominent patent ductus arteriosus in in these cases we can see the prominent uh, uh, pulsation in the pulmonary after that uh, in, uh, we have to expect for the uh, epigastric pulsation epigastric pulsation is uh, predominantly fine in right ventricular hypertrophy it can be uh, found in uh, any case of abdominal outback aneurysm or it can also be uh, found in case of uh, that is hepatic pulses, which is the predominant feature of tricuspid regurgitation or outpeak regurgitation. This is the thing. After the uh, inspection of the epigastric and the front, we have to move for the back. In the back, we will see for any bronze deformity like kyphosis, choriosis, or kyphoscoriosis, and uh, that is grouping of any grouping of soldier is present or not, or any winging of scapula. So in this patient, there is uh, no prevalence or no presence of any uh, gross deformity or by any other finding like ruby or uh, soldier or uh, wing of scapula. So as we inspect, the shape is normal. Okay, the shape of the precordium is normal. So we write then pulsation. Pulsation means it's apical pulsation. Any visible apical pulsation present or not. In this subject, there is no visible apical pulsation. Okay. So we write that no diffused uh, pulsation is seen. Then N goes superficial vein, uh, not present. Then polythelia or accessory nipple, not present. Then scar marks, no scar marks and uh, no other scar marks present. So these are the uh, precordium inspection. Then the outside the precordium, okay. There is no carotid, uh, visible carotid pulsation, no suprasternal pulsation, no aortic pulsation. In the inspection part, okay. No uh, pulmonary area pulsation is seen, no epigastrium pulsation is seen, and back is normal. Okay. So we write that none. So we write that no visible pulsation. Okay. And in the back is also normal. Okay. So these are the inspection part. And you have to write as it is, which is your findings. Okay. So after the inspection part, we go to the palpation. In the palpation part, first you have to see the tenderness or temperature of the patient. Okay. okay. Then after that, the trachea. And after that, the main palpation part has the four areas mainly. And you have to palpate the four areas. Okay. So now start. So we begin with the palpation uh, regarding the cardiovascular system. So first we start with the pal palpation of the trachea. So to palpate the trachea, we will ask the patient to look to one side. So the anterior border of the sinus of the mustard is uh, prominent. So I put one finger here. And then indicate the And done the case. 
So this border is also prominent. And now I can palpate uh, And after the patient faces straight, I can palpate the trachea. And here the trachea is in the midline position. So it's a normal finding. The trachea can be deviated in certain conditions. So suppose, for example, the trachea is deviated to the right side. So I'll feel a depression on the left side and vice versa. So conditions like massive cardiomegaly, pericardial effusion with cardiac tamponade, and aortic aneurysm dissection can cause a shift uh, in the mediastinal structures, including the trachea. So we need to palpate mainly four areas in the anterior chest wall. There is a mitral area, tricuspid area, pulmonary area, and the aortic area. Aortic area can be felt in the second intercostal space on the right side. So I get the angle of sternum here. So this is the second rib. And here I will get the second intercostal space. This is the aortic area. On the le left side correspondingly is the uh, pulmonary area. In the fourth intercostal space, I will get the tricuspid area and in the fifth intercostal space, I will get the uh, mitral area. So to palpate the aortic area and the pulmonary area, we need to have the patient in sitting and leaning forward position. So here I uh, palpate with my, uh, the palm of my hand and this is the pulmonary area. So to palpate the tricuspid area, we need to reach the left fourth intercostal space. So this is the second. This is the third, and this is the fourth rib, and this is the left fourth interval space. So, uh, with the palm of my hand, I'll palpate the tricuspid area. So now we will palpate the apex beat, which can be felt in the left fifth interval space, either medial or lateral to the midclavicular line. So I have to first reach the mid, uh, fifth interval space. This is the second, third, fourth, and this is the fifth. So first I will palpate with the palm of my right hand. Then with the ulnar border of my right hand. And then I'll try to localize it with the pulp of my index finger. And also simultaneously we need to have uh, the left hand on the carotid. And see uh, and see whether the pulsations are in compliance with the uh, carotid pulsations or not. So they are in compliance with the carotid pulsation. So these, these are the apex bit pulsations. And this can be felt medial to the midclavicular line in the fifth left fifth interval space. So, uh, and if we do not uh, get the uh, pulse pulsations in the supine position, so we need to shift the patient to left lateral decubitus position and try the same maneuver. And if we do not uh, get uh, the pulsations here, so we need to pay, uh, make the patient sit and lean forward and try the same maneuver here. So even if, if we are not able to feel the pulsations in this position, we have to check in the right side of the uh, patient to rule out dextrocardia. And even after this, if we are not able to feel any epi uh, epical pulsations, so we have to say that the apex bit cannot be felt. So apart from the mitral area, pulmonary area, the tricuspid area, and the aortic area, we need to palpate a few other areas. The new aortic area in the left third intercostal space, right here. We need to check the direction of the venous blood flow. If any superficial veins are engulfed, in uh, this scenario, uh, none of the veins are engulfed. We have to check for a thrill in the carotid arteries. No thrills are, uh, no thrill is present. And we need to check for suprasternal pulsations here, or epigastric pulsations somewhere here. And uh, we have to uh, check for the um, uh, palpable pericardial rub, or uh, any tracheal tug, or any pulsation over the back. So in the uh, palpation part, the um, apex bit suppose found in the two centimeter medial to mid clavicular line. Okay, then palpable heart sound no thrill is not palpable. Okay, these are the in the pathological condition the thrills and the palpable heart sound are found. Okay, in the uh, Mitral stenosis, the palpable heart sound, mainly S1 is found in the mitral area, okay? And in, and thrill is found in MI, MS in the mitral area, okay? Systolic thrill is found in the MI, in the mitral area, and diastolic thrill is commonest in MS, in the mitral area, okay? After that, the pulmonary area, pulsation is palpable. So in the uh, pulmonary area, 
pulsation is found in the left second intercostal space palpable heart sound not found thrill is not found in palpable heart sound in the pulmonary area mainly s2 is found okay and in thrill there are usually syst uh, systolic thrill in the pulmonary stenosis phallot steatology in this condition there are thrill present in the pulmonary area after that the aortic in the aortic area pulsation is found in the right second intercostal space palpable heart sound no thrill is no okay so in the palpable heart sound mainly s2 is palpable in the aortic area in the systemic hypertension okay and in thrill tricuspid incompetence pulmonary stenosis you can find thrill in the aortic area after that the tricuspid area is found in the so in the tricuspid area the uh, pulsation is found in the left fourth intercostal space and the new aortic area pulsation is uh, found in the third left intercostal space okay direction of venous flow there is here is no venous prominence okay so as there is no superficial vein the direction of venous flow is absent okay other pulsation no no other pulsation is found vericardial rub and thug uh, tracheal thug are not palpable so these are the palpation part okay so after the palpation the percussion part in the cbs examination the percussion is not routinely done okay and after the percussion we go to the auscultation part so now we start with the auscultation in the cbs examination so we have to auscult it mainly four areas that is the mitral area the tricuspid area the pulmonary area and the aortic area so to auscult it the mitral area we have to make the patient in the left lateral decubitus position madhi get pass film and left fifth intercostal space and just to the location of the apex beat we have to put the diaphragm in the stethoscope and and we have to feel for the carotid pulsations simultaneously so in the mitral area with the diaphragm the stethoscope i can hear the first and the second heart sounds in the mitral area the first heart sound is better heard along with that if the third and the fourth heart sounds are present we can hear them with the bell of the stethoscope so in this case they are not present and the mitral area is also used to uh, auscultate mid diastolic murmur in case of mitral stenosis and the opening snap in case of mitral stenosis if they are present so one additional point is that the heart sound in the mitral area will be heard at the height of expiration shasnin shasharun shasnin shasharun bore thako this is the point where we will hear the heart sound in the in, in mitral area so now we will auscultate the aortic area so it has to be done in the sitting and leaning forward position in the right second intercostal space at the, and this has to be done at the height of expiration shasni shasharun shasni shasharun dore thakun so here we will we can hear the systolic ejection murmurs in aortic stenosis or in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy if they are present so now we'll auscultate the pulmonary area that is in the left second intercostal space here also we hear the primarily the two sounds s1 and s2 and here the second heart sound is better heard and we can also hear pulmonary pulmonary valve murmurs and this has to be uh, done at the height of inspiration shasni shasharu shasni dhore thako so in cases of uh, mit uh, mitral area and the aortic area they have to be auscultated at the height of expiration and the pulmonary and the tricuspid area they have to be auscultated at the height of inspiration now we will auscultate the tricuspid area in the left fourth intercostal space so this has to be done in the supine position so it has to be done at the height of inspiration shasni shasharun shasni dore thako so this is the point where we will auscultate for the heart sounds so in the tricuspid area uh, we can hear the early diastolic murmur of the aortic regurgitation and pan systolic murmur of tricuspid regurgitation also we can hear the pan systolic murmur in case of ventricular septal defect so these are the points you have to mention in the auscultation part first is cardiac rate rhythm mitral area in the mitral area heart sound murmur any other adventitious heart sound like s1 s2 and the in the same uh, 
process we have done in the aortic area, pulmonary area, tricuspid area and other than this the neoti neo aortic area, over carotid artery and root of the neck. Okay. So these are the points you have to auscultate. In the cardiac rate you have that it is 79 per minute. The rhythm is regular. In the mitral area heart sound is we can heart by the stethoscope is S1 and S2. Any murmur, no murmur uh, is heard. Any adventitious sound is no. And in the aortic pulmonary tricuspid near aortic and over carotid and root of the neck. All these areas you have to auscultate and write as your findings. Okay. Any other heart sound in this point. The what are the heart sound you heard. Any murmur found or not. Or any adventitious sound you heard or not. Okay. So this all about the cardiac examination, systemic examination part. Now additionally we see the auscultation and radiation of murmurs. So now we will see the radiation of the murmur. First in case of aortic stenosis. In aortic stenosis we auscultate the murmur at the right second intercostal space. Uh, it is a ejection systolic type of murmur. So the mark in this area the second left right sec uh, second intercostal space. So after that the murmur radiates towards the carotid. So if there is any radiation, so we have to auscultate in the carotid area. So if there is the radiation of the murmur towards the carotid, it is suggestive of the aortic stenosis. Now in the uh, right second intercostal space, we auscultate the murmur for aortic regurgitation. In case of aortic regurgitation, the murmur radiates from the right second intercostal space towards the left third intercostal space that is the neo aortic area. So if the murmur originating from right second intercostal space, the sound radiates toward the left third intercostal space, it is indicative of aortic regurgitation. So in the left uh, fourth parasternal space, we heard for the murmur of tricuspid regurgitation. In the left foot parasternal space, the, uh, the murmur is originating and if it moves upward in the same plane and towards the upper, uh, upper, uh, upper side up, uh, up to the second or the third intercostal space, which is parasternal or left sided uh, second, third, fourth, second third intercostal space parasternal or moves upward from the fourth intercostal space on the tricuspid area it is indicative of the murmur of tricuspid regurgitation. So first we have to heart here. The next we have to auscultate the area in the left upper part of parasternal area. So in the pulmonary area, we will heart for the murmur of pulmonary stenosis in the left second intercostal space. So, in pulmonary stenosis, we can uh, find the uh, ejection systolic murmur that moves towards the left clavicle. So, if the murmur originating from the left second intercostal space in the pulmonary area and it moves upward towards the clavicle, it is indicative of the pulmonary stenosis. So now, in case of mitral regurgitation, we have to first localize the apex bead or the mitral area. So in the mitral area, we will hard for any pansystolic murmur. If the pansystolic murmur radiates towards the axilla in the same plane, if the pansystolic murmur radiates towards the same plane in the towards the left axilla, so it is indicative of the mitral regurgitation. So we have to first localize the mitral area. We will hard in the mitral area, and if the uh, murmur goes in the same direction towards the axilla, it is indicative of mitral regurgitation where you can find a pansystolic type of murmur. 